So is true forgiveness actually possible? The kind of forgiveness where someone actually forgives you and they don't hold it over your head or bring it up anymore, they just let it go and there's true reconciliation. Is that actually possible? Let's talk about that. What's up guys, Jeff here. I make videos just like this every single week to help you live a bold life for Jesus. If that sounds like what you're looking for, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, elbow drop that notification bell, just do all the cool YouTube things. It means the absolute world to me. Anyway guys, I have two awesome announcements coming up. I realized that was four, not important. I have two announcements coming up. Number one is I'm in the new YouTube space. Look at this. If you've not already seen the vlog of where I made this, do so. It'll be linked here. Uh, watch it after this video, so I'll link it down in the description, all right? Check that out after this video. Second awesome thing is I have some t-shirts out, so check this one out. It is the I Am Loved shirt, and it's just because in every aspect of life, no matter the situation, the difficulty, whatever you're facing, I want everyone to remember that you are loved by your Heavenly Father. That's why it says, I am loved forever because forever means for all time, for eternity, no matter what, in all circumstances, you are loved. So I'm going to have those linked down below. If you would like to buy one of these shirts, that would be amazing. It helps support this channel, helps me keep doing what we are doing here. And it's just an awesome reminder that no matter what, you are loved. So I'll have that link down below. And actually, this shirt is a limited edition, this kind of tie-dye gray with this black print. This is a limited edition. I'm only going to have one more available. And if you would like to get that one, I'm going to have it in a giveaway. So if you would like to be entered to win this, this is going to be my first giveaway, guys. I've been meaning to do a giveaway since I was at 100 subscribers a long time ago. So it's my first giveaway. If you would like to win one of these shirts, the only other shirt like this one, then I want you to go to my Instagram. It's also linked down below, but you can find me. It's Jeff Evans 116 Not a shame, baby. Gosh, I shouldn't have said that. Follow me on Instagram and go and like and comment on the latest picture of this shirt. I'll actually have a picture with me in this shirt. Go and like that picture and comment on it. And if you win, I will send you a message and I'll get your shirt size and get this packaged up and sent to you absolutely free. Anyway, guys, it's my first giveaway. I'm not doing it super fancy. Hit me up on Instagram. All right, guys, so let's start the video. Is true forgiveness possible? Now, this topic kind of comes up because I've been reading a book lately. If you if you watch the vlog where I built this, I talked about the book a couple times. I'm actually listening to it on Audible, um, not sponsored, but I just I love to listen to audiobooks while I'm doing other things. And I'm listening to this book called Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. Now, to me, this is fascinating because I never knew much about the Jewishness of Jesus. And it's amazing how alive the scriptures become when you see Jesus through the eyes of a disciple following a rabbi. How important the things he said or did not say really was in this culture, in this context. And so I am just being absolutely blown away and I want to thank Dave Adamson for recommending this book to me. Uh, he has a whole list of these books to read and I'm going to read all of them. Um, this one has just been so eye-opening. If you want to check out Dave, I have him linked down below because he does YouTube videos just like this one. But I've been loving that book and if you want to check out that book, I will have it linked down below. It will be an affiliate link. doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support this channel and again, means the world to me. Uh, so I wanted to get that out there anyway. Reading this book, Sitting at the Feet of Rally Jesus, and a story that I, I read or heard last week, or maybe it was even the week before, but it's just kind of stuck in my brain. And the story is about this Messianic Jew that is in, uh, in an Arab village, and he's driving through this Arab village. This is an absolute true story, by the way. I'm actually going to read to you what he says in just a moment. But absolute true story, and it's this Messianic Jew who is driving through this village, this Arab village, and a Palestinian boy runs out in front of him, and, and when he does, he doesn't even have a chance to stop, and he, and he hits him, and he ends up killing this young Palestinian boy. Now, Elon, this is the name of the uh, Messianic Jew, Elon is just tore up with grief and guilt and, and regret, and he just, he wishes that he could have done something to stop it and to change it, but, but he can't. So the only thing he knows to do is to ask for forgiveness from the family. Now he's warned 
by many that this is not a good idea because in this culture and in, in this Arab culture that they can actually kill Elon as a vengeance for the son that they lost that this is their culture that they can choose to kill him um, but Elon goes ahead and he speaks to a Arab uh, priest and the priest tells him that he should approach them with a solha now a solha in this context is simply a meal it's a meal of reconciliation that you you sit down at the table with someone you're asking forgiveness from and you eat and if you eat the wrong deed is erased it is completely gone it's forgiven it's forgotten it's gone and the solha if the solha is agreed to and the meal is shared it is erased forever so Elon actually goes and he approaches this family and and he provides a solha he provides this meal and I'm gonna read to you what he says right here I should also note this book is so good I've also bought it on Kindle um, that's impressive I bought the book twice now because I heard so much but I couldn't quite remember all the details so I had to buy it so that I could go back and read it so this is what Elon actually says happens when he provides this dinner the cups of coffee remained on the table untouched According to tradition, the father would be the first to taste from the cup as a sign that he accepted the reconciliation gesture and had indeed agreed to forgive. The tension in his face had cast a shadow on the proceedings until then, but at that point he suddenly began to smile. The lines of grief softened. He looked at me squarely and his face broadened as he moved toward me, opening his arms in a gesture of embrace. As we met and embraced, he kissed me ceremoniously he kissed me ceremonially three times on the cheeks. Everyone began to shake hands with one another as the father sipped coffee. The whole atmosphere was transformed, the tension at an end. But then something even more surprising happened. A spokesman for the family turned to Elon with this remarkable invitation. Know, O oh brother, that you are in place of this son who has died. You have a family and a home somewhere else, but know that here is your second home. Wow. Now this is a huge, huge deal in this culture. In this context, this would have been somewhat unheard of. But what just happened is the father not only forgave Elon for killing his son, but he also invited him in to take the place of his son. He accepted him almost as an adopted son. That he truly forgave him and had this meal of reconciliation that their past was put in the past, that it was completely gone. Now this seems kind of crazy to us, but you've probably read about the same meal numerous times in the Bible. The Solha is a very popular feast in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Think back to the story of Jacob. If you remember Jacob, he betrayed his brother and then he ran off and found his uncle Laban. His uncle Laban had a daughter named Rachel that Jacob fell in love with immediately. And he wanted to marry Rachel, and that's all he wanted was to marry Rachel so much that he promised Laban he'd work seven years for free for Rachel's hand in marriage. Well, on the day of his wedding, Laban actually drops off his daughter Leah, who is apparently the less attractive of the daughters. And Jacob marries her and immediately regrets it. And then he comes back and he says, what have you done? I wanted Rachel. And Laban says, I'll give you Rachel for another seven years of marriage. Jacob does. Basically, Jacob cons his uncle out of the majority of his livestock and his possessions. And suddenly, Jacob turns tail and runs away with his daughters and the children and the livestock. And he kind of leaves with all this stuff. And so Laban comes pursuing them. And when Laban actually catches them, he, he basically threatens Jacob. But then they come to a truce and they decide that they would be peaceful with each other and they decide this over a meal. This meal that they share is a solha, it's a meal of reconciliation. That when they left the table that day, or when they left eating, it was done, it was complete, it was buried, it was gone forever. Now jump forward to the New Testament. Think of the story, you probably all know it. It's one of the most famous parables in the entire Bible. The prodigal son. What happened with the prodigal son? Well, this son, he decided that his father was better off dead and that instead of waiting for his father to die, he wanted to go ahead and take his inheritance and he wanted to go live the high life, right? He wanted to go party it up, sleep around, get drunk. He wanted to just, he wanted to have a party. So much so that he loved the idea of party more than he loved his own father. It's even more insane in this Jewish culture. This would have has shocked the listeners to Jesus when he told this story. But this youngest son, he runs off and he parties it up. But then he runs out of money, he runs out of friends, 
He runs out of luxuries, and he's stuck cleaning up after pigs. This would have been disgusting to Jews. Pigs were considered unclean. He decides he's going to go back and he's going to be a servant to the father, not a son. But what happens? When he comes back to the father, the father runs and he embraces him. And what's the first thing that he does? He provides a feast. He provides a party. A gathering. A festival. But a feast. A soha. A meal of reconciliation. The wrongs you had done to me are now gone, obsolete, null and void. This is the final one I'm going to talk about because I never realized what it was. This is after Jesus' resurrection. Remember when Jesus went to the cross, his beloved disciple, the one who would never leave them, the one who would die for him, the one who would give up his very life, the one who would chop a servant's ear off for Jesus. When Jesus is hanging on the cross, that same disciple abandoned him. He betrayed him. He left him. His master, the one that he claimed to love, he betrayed him. We're, of course, talking about Peter. Peter, the beloved disciple. When Jesus needed him the most, he left. He abandoned him. He got out. He betrayed him. He said, I do not know that Jesus. He cursed him. Look at the morning after the resurrection. Jesus shows up and the disciples are fishing. Peter's even went back to his old life. What's Jesus do? He cooks them a meal. He cooks the disciples a meal, but he specifically cooks Peter a meal. And he says, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, three times for the three times that Peter denied him. And then they shared a meal, a meal of reconciliation, a soha. And in that moment, it was gone. It was forgotten. It was null and void. It no longer existed. Those wrongs that had been done had been erased. Peter, we're good. Peter, I love you. You know what that says to me? It says no matter what, no matter what I've done, if I've betrayed Jesus, if I've sinned, if I've messed up, if I don't even know Him, or if I'm the worst Christian out of all the Christians in the world, and I continuously sin and continuously mess up and fall back into that same addiction, whatever it is that I'm doing, there is reconciliation for me. That Jesus offers forgiveness. That you are never too far gone. Right? Even when you're in a far off land eating pig slop, the Father is waiting and longing for you to come to Him, for Him to share a meal of reconciliation, for Him to wrap His arms around you and to embrace you and to love you. Because guess what? No matter what you've done, how far you've gone, how messed up you've been, there is reconciliation. The Father offers it to you because you are loved beyond understanding that God loves you. He he is for you. He adores you. He has never left you, nor has He forsaken you. He is waiting for you to come home. There is forgiveness for everything. God provides a soha. He provided His Son as a sacrifice for you so that you could be made righteous. Yes, true forgiveness is possible. I believe we are called to forgive others as God has forgiven us. You see, God loves you and He has forgiven you and we are called to love others and to forgive others and maybe we can't do it to the point that Jesus can do it. Maybe we can't completely erase it from existence, but we can love people despite the wrongs they've done to us. And we can embrace people despite the wrongs they've done to us. We can forgive others as He forgives us. He is just and able and He forgives you no matter what. You are loved beyond understanding. And my final words for you guys today, I pray that you learned something, that this video was educational and it was informative, but my main goal is to let you know that no matter what, if Jesus could love Peter, the disciple who betrayed him in his most needed hour, if Jesus loves him and he forgives him, nothing you do will separate you from his love. The powers of heaven and hell cannot overcome his love for you. Nothing can keep his love away from you. He loves you and he forgives you. No matter what. Yes.
guys, forgiveness is possible. Because He forgives you. Alright guys, I hope this video was informative. I hope you learned something, but more than that, I hope you felt something. If you did enjoy this video, I ask that you go and hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, click that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep living. That bold life. Throw peace.